Hey everybody, OCD Mikey here, and I uh, wanted to take a quick, and, and I know this one's not on a tripod, so I, I'm sorry about that, but I wanted to take a second to go through what I call SOS audio, same old shiz, okay? That's 90% of the hi-fi out there is the same old crap that it's been happening since the 1980s. The same circuits, type circuits, the same type amplifiers, the same... 4K T88, it's in a chassis with three transformers. You know, I mean, the same things. I've seen them over and over and over and over and over again ad nauseum, okay? So I'm going to take a second to show you the difference between the things that I carry and the things that I think are standard stuff. I like the exotic and the unique circuits. Not only does it have to sound killer, but it has to be something that is unique and not just the same old thing, okay? Because I feel if people are going to spend good amount of money on hi-fi you should have an heirloom quality piece that is very unique in some way or another and isn't just the same old crap that you get from the dealer when you go out there and you buy those big names okay okay so here are a couple pieces to show you what i was talking about um these two pieces are in my rig i use them every day and um th this is an example of pieces that are not the sos as if you will same old shizzle uh, type hi-fi, okay? Um, meaning regular old, just typical hi-fi pieces, okay? If we look at the offerings that are out there in the public for sale, you know, on the magazines, wherever, whatever, wherever you find them, okay? Most of them will be just typical hi-fi. There are very few that stand above and beyond and are kind of separate strata in terms of creations, the first one over here is the Jeff Roland, okay? This is a Jeff Roland 625S2. This is a stereo amplifier. Um, and it is, as you can see, okay, so in a typical amplifier, you would see fins on the side. A bunch of little fins lined up for heat sinks, okay? That's typical, you know, those are extruded, they're cheap. Well, relatively speaking. Um, but... What you see here is you see a full, this is not a face panel, okay? This is, there's, there's, there's a little line that's machined there, but this whole amplifier, uh, you know, outside of this take, we take this lid off, it's one block of aluminum, okay? And all the output devices are just layered are on, on either side, the rows of them, the transistors, and they have little screws, they're held down to the body of this thing itself, which is the heat sink. The whole chassis is the heat sink. These holes on the sides, which you can see, you get a better view there, make the heat sink. It's an integral chassis and heat sink. Okay, that is the creation of Jeff Rowland. If you ever see this in other amps, they took it from Jeff Rowland because he was the pioneer of this. Okay. Um, and then this amp, this lid is machined off. They machine down in, they make a pit here, and then they stop halfway through and they flip this thing over. And on the bottom side, there's another plate like this and they machine halfway up. So the power supply is under here. And then the amplifier is on the top with a wall in between to separate and, and keep the stray RF and EMI from coming over to the other side and messing with the delicate amp circuitry okay well i don't know that i'd use delicate really for anything that's jeff roland um it's all very stout and 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 well and strong built but so this is a very non-typical amplifier okay it's this is solid state jeff roland is my favorite solid state brand um if i have to pick one okay there are others that i like for other reasons but jeff roland is for sure the top of, of my solid state brands, okay, for amplification. Um, what we have here is a vacuum tube amplifier. This comes from Nat Audio. Nat Audio being my favorite vacuum tube company, okay? Um, and what we see here, of course, you see, this looks almost nautical. It almost looks like a cruise ship. It almost looks, I mean, it can look like many things. And there are different, you can get a chimney that goes around it that is a cylindrical chimney, if you like. There's different ways to put this, which is a heat sink and also a tube protection cage because that inside glass gets extremely hot. And if you touch it, you can get burnt. Children touch it, a little doggy comes up, 
believe me, the dog probably won't get his nose on that glass because by the time he gets somewhere near it, he's going to feel the heat. Um, but it's it's a protection piece, okay? And we look at this chassis here. This does have a typical, you know, a front panel on it, a typical sort of chassis design. It's a little unique in that it layers the sheet metal on the sides to give some relief and to give it some second, you know, a couple different textures. So it's pretty cool in that regard. This is a switch for high or low power. Um, I've never needed it above low and to put it on high this is and and i'll get into that and this is just the power switch okay these are the pull type you need to pull this toggle and then lift it so that prevents accidental slippage i cannot push that right now if i pull it and lift it now i can switch it but it keeps it from getting automatically tweaked you know and 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 that's this is i think they, they use these in like airplanes and stuff where you have to pull and throw the switch um so, and this is, now we'll pull this, this protection off here. Let's see if I can do this one-handedly. I don't think I can. Okay. And so this is just a, a loose piece like you see here. Um, aluminum layered, or actually this is stainless steel. Stainless steel layered. Um, and what we have here is an amazing vacuum tube. Uh, this is called a GM100 tube. And let me come a little closer. <sighs> We've got little dead bugs around here, <laughs> dead gnats, because they're attracted to it and they fry pretty quick. Um, but uh, so um, uh, this this is a massive uh, uh, um, uh, radio transmitter tube where you could have an FM radio station and we could transmit miles and miles and miles, maybe hundreds of miles. I have no idea what the what the what the distance is, but. It's a lot, okay, and and it's there's a lot of voltage that goes in here, and this thing sounds phenomenal. Now, why would somebody use something like this? Well, here's why, okay, because this is a single-ended triode. So if I'm going to, let me give you a little frame of example, or, or a little frame of reference here. Our typical single-ended triode that we all know about is a 300B, okay? So right here, we have an example of a 300B tube. I'll pull this puppy out okay this is the most famous of all the single-ended triodes okay this is eight watts okay full power and it's complete glory okay i mean it sounds so magical in a good amplifier it's it's nuts these amps here are western electric 50 watt 91a uh, uh, um, clones. So these use the same exact circuit as like a 1935 circuit done with modern iron. We've got killer Japanese iron right there. On the way back, we've got a toroid. We like overcome a lot of the, you know, anomalies that were, that the originals had that we took care of. Here's a canary audio version of, of them. I've got some extra special 300 bs right here that are made in um like the czech republic um or um uh, Yugos yugoslavia let's see so here's another this is an emission labs 300 b see that 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 mesh plate this is this is spectacular these are just these are handmade they're gorgeous gorgeous piece i'm sorry that's my rectifier dum dum so here is a 300B uh, as made by Emission Labs. Look at the difference. This is modern made, but it's handmade. I mean, this is gorgeous stuff. I love this glass. Like, it's part of why I love tubes is just the beauty of this. Okay, this is not typical. Not only is a tube not typical, but this is not a typical tube. I mean, look at the gorgeousness. Look, look at how that thing's made. Okay, so this is not typical hi-fi. This is expert level, you know, this is really, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it is for the connoisseur, for somebody who really wants artwork in addition to audio, for somebody that wants something more than the standard you know, just regular old what you get when you go to the store. When you go to most dealers, you're just going to get standard audio. You're going to get this stuff that's easily, readily available that they can keep pumping out widgets on, but you're not going to get this unique stuff. You're not going to get unique 805 
directly heated triodes. Um, you're just not going to get this kind of stuff. So now let's go back over to the amplifier that I was speaking about. Okay. Now this is also a single ended triode. Okay. Here's the standard 300B. See if I can sand this here without dropping it. Okay. So we've got a 300B versus a GM100. Okay. And so normally the thing is with a 300B, which is considered, you know, one of the powerful single-ended triodes, well, one of the standard, I guess, single-ended triode, because the 2A3, for instance, which many people cherish, is like 2 watts or 3 watts, okay? This is a big whopping 8 watts. And I'll tell you what, in those Western Electric amps, if I put them with 100 dB speakers, like I have some uh, Pure Audio Project Trio 15s, man, they hammer. There's no loss of bass. There's no loss of top end. I mean, I can put on dead mouse and they, they just kill it. So, but that's because they're 100 dB speakers. You're relegated to very efficient speakers within 300B, okay? So people's, up, uh, the, the, the drawback, the con of having a 300B amp is that you must have a very sensitive speaker. You must have something that's 100 dB usually or better. Yeah, you get away with 95 or better. You'd probably be fine. But really, you want something in the 100 dB range, okay? And there are very few speakers that are 100 dB sensitive and, and that look good because most of them will be horn, weird kind of shapes, a lot of them, to get that 100 dB. So the purpose for this NAT GM100 was to take the lush nature of a single-ended triode type of classified tube, that the classification of this is a single-ended triode, and give it 160 watts. Not 8 watts. 160 watts. Okay? The 805s that we saw over there, the things with the caps on top, those will give 35 watts per side. Um, you can get 35 out of those. So those are the most intense Single-ended triodes are 845s or um, uh, uh, 805, 845, 811, those kind of things will have 30 watts, generally speaking, roughly. You can get out of one tube. So this allows us to get 160 watts out of a single vacuum tube, okay? When we're talking about vacuum tube amps, the single tube amps are the best sounding, once you start putting two tubes together, you get crossover distortion. Once you start multiplying, you put 12 per side. Now we're in a total fiasco, okay? To get them all not oscillating and lined up and everything, man, it's a, it's a feat in itself, okay? A single tube is always the most pure design and the best sounding single-ended triode. This is the stuff dreams are made of. This amp will power Magicos, no problem, okay? Even the big ones. This thing is stable from 0.5 ohm all the way to 32 ohms, okay? If you know amp specs, that's absolutely nuts. These transformers go out to 80K, from like a dead short to 80K. Extremely high bandwidth amplifiers, okay? Um, they sound phenomenal. Just one single driver tube, a 6N, 6P. This vacuum tube here, this this amplifier here, as, as you can see it, this is heirloom level quality. Um, it, it is just something that is such a unique piece that it makes a statement in itself just by virtue of the circuit and how the thing is done. The same with these Jeff Rowland amps. Not only do I have something that's elegant that are unique circuits that are one of a kind in the way that the heat sinks are um, situated with the cavities for power supply and amp, or this one of a kind uh, way that this is a uh, GM 170 used, where you can get 160 watts from single ended triode. Um, these are statement pieces in themselves, and they do happen to sound phenomenal. So this is the perfect mix for me of look versus uh, uh, the, the Sonic as well. So I wanted to point out how this is not SOS audio. We can look back there. There's another one. Do you see that? That is the little brother of this amp here, okay? It doesn't make 160 watts like this of Class A, pure single-ended triode, it makes 120 watts 
of pure class A. Single ended triode has the cap, electrode on cap on top, single driver tube. You can see that. So uh, this is the type of hi-fi that I deal with. It's the kind of stuff that you can, that makes not only the best music, but also looks gorgeous. And so it rides right in the middle of the two camps kind of that I was talking about. They're not really two camps. It's just, I want people to be aware that some products are made to look like they sound killer, but they don't necessarily sound killer. Other ones are made to look, this form follows function. So this is a function thing, but it happens to look wicked. This is a function thing, and it happens to look absolutely amazing. But you can't do 160 watts of pure class A triode unless you have a GM100. So it's a one of a kind, and it has form that follows function, and the byproduct just so happens to look gorgeous. Here is another amplifier. It's a power amp made by AGD in California. So it's American-made product. Um, and look at this. Is this the same old shiz? I don't think so. What do we have here? We have a Class D module inside a KT88 glass envelope. Can you see that? So is this is this Macintosh? I don't think so. Is it audio research? I don't think so something completely different and unique totally cool and this amplifier sounds phenomenal it's for sale by the way they decided to start selling direct and so i don't sell these anymore because you can get them direct from agd so call up alberto and buy from him these are uh very 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 good sounding amplifiers this is called the Vivace, and then there's a little brother called the Audion. I love both of the amps to this day. The Audion's actually my favorite. This one sounds better, but the Audion's so cute. It fits in your hand, and it's packed such a punch for such a little amp. I really love it. The other models I'm not into, but I do like these. And this is very unique. This tube is, there's nothing like it. Nothing like it in the market, okay? It's not the same old stuff. This is not SOS audio. Okay, and here is an example of a sleeper. Okay, so this amplifier here, made by Nat, it's a company that I import. Uh, this is a very, all their stuff is very unique. They make the big tube monos that I used to have over there that are now sold and gone. Uh, these will replace them. Uh, and so let me explain something. Now, this is on the other end of where I told you about something that looks pretty and, uh, or something that doesn't look pretty, but is all sound. Okay. This looks like nothing. It's a black face plate. It's not pretty. I don't consider it pretty. Maybe some people consider that pretty. It's, it's, it's clean, but it's, it's basic. I don't, I don't find this pretty, but this thing is the most sick, meaning good. This is the most incredibly good sounding amplifier i don't know how to compare it i'll listen to it and then i'll put it into perspective by comparing it to other things um this is extremely unique and extremely there's nothing like it at all just like these other amps i've been showing you because this is the stuff i'm into i'm into one-of-a-kind type circuit designs this is not one of a kind, meaning there's only one of these. I mean, there is no other circuit even close to what this is, okay? This is a hybrid tube transistor. Let's go inside, and I'll show you what this thing has. Okay, so what we've got in here is, and look, completely unsuspecting, plain black faceplate, doesn't look like anything, doesn't look the beautiful. You're not going to get people coming in and go, oh, look at the blue meter meters. They're going to look at this. If they don't know anything about hi-fi, they're not even going to, it's not even going to register. They're not going to think it's pretty. They're not going to be attracted to it. Nobody's really going to be attracted to it because it's not about the looks. It's about the sound. Okay. Once we come over here, what we're going to see is the most minimalist circuit, the most minimalist amplifier with the most power you've ever seen in your life. This has a hundred watts 
of pure Class A, single-ended Class A. This amp uses one field effect transistor, one new Vista tube. The technology is called NuFET. It uses a tube in between each electrode of that transistor. Nobody does that. Nobody knows how to do that. They might figure it out, but this is the first company to pioneer it. We have a power supply. We have filter caps. We have in here a special military level capacitor. We have inductor, an inductor or resistor, power resistor down there. We've got a transformer uh, here. Zero PC boards. Can you tell that? Okay, there's no PC boards. This means it's called point-to-point -point wired. Once you put audio onto a PC board, you're running it on a thin piece of foil on a fiberglass substrate. It's not a wire. It's just a thin-ass little piece of foil. And they're little teeny lines. If you look, they look like little racetracks, right? So that, you, that degrades from just having regular wires everywhere. You can't regular wire a full amplifier normally and do it in an efficient manner. If you make something exceptionally purist like this, then you can come in and you can do this delicate point-to-point -point work using bus bars. Uh, this is high-end stuff. You do, there is no PC board in here, okay? There is zero negative feedback. Th this is output transformerless. This is a single stage amplifier. Most amplifiers have an input stage, a gain stage, and an output stage. Okay, Each time you put another stage, you complicate things, you got more problems, you're fighting against something every single stage. This amp has a single amplification stage. It has output transformerless, it's output capacitorless, it's direct coupled, it has point-to-point -point wired, it's pure class A. Uh, you can't get any more purist than this piece right here. This is an output inductor. This is in series with the output. That is not an output transformer. Here's another transformer for the power supply. Okay? So this is an extremely unique circuit. There is nothing Macintosh makes like this. There's nothing Audio Research makes like this. There's nothing Constellation makes even close to this. There's nothing any other company makes even close to this. Show me if you think there is. So you look at the face, it's got nothing. You're not going to get any recognition awards from Nat. You're not going to get any people going, ooh, ah, I know how much you spent on those because you're under the radar with that brand. And it's a black face. And when it comes to play music, it's got a huge shalele. It's got a big one that's going to just smack you in the head. You would not believe what these sound like. And I'm going to put them up in the system in a bit. But this is the kind of hi-fi I'm talking about, people. This is hi-fi. That other crap is not hi-fi. Okay? And I'm calling it crap because I think it's a dime a dozen I've seen it every year since the 80s. It hasn't changed. This is innovation. This is innovation. Those giant tubes that were there are innovation. This chassis that has a heat sink built in, not a regular heat sink. It's part of the, that is innovation from Jeff Rowland. Okay. This is what I'm talking about when I say hi-fi and when I say exotic. The other names, because they're expensive and they're 100 grand, doesn't make them exotic. What makes them exotic is the circuit, the lack of boards, the uniqueness, and the sonic is what really brings it together. Wanted to take a second to show you that. Thanks for joining, and see ya!